It's time for today's episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast, recorded in front of a slightly tipsy studio audience at world-famous Champions Fried Chicken. We will have the latest on Georgia Bulldogs football, basketball, and recruiting. Watch live and send us your questions on the 11 Alive Sports page on Facebook. Be advised this podcast is off the record and not safe for work. Also, be sure to subscribe to the UGA Sports Live Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Hey everybody, welcome to the UGA Sports Live Podcast. My name is Roddy DeBulsey. I will be your host for the next hour. I'm joined by Jake Roos, the recruiting savant at UGASports.com, and of course by Jim Donnan, former head coach at the University of Georgia, college football Hall of Fame inductee, uh, man with all the answers, or at least the ones that he will give us. He, he doesn't tell us everything he knows, but he tells us most of it. So uh, if you have questions, go ahead and submit them. If you're watching this on the 11 Alive Facebook page, that's where you submit the questions. I've had people ask me, hey, how do I get a question on the show? You have to actually be watching it live. Um, it's on the 11 Alive Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash 11 Alive Sports. It's on their sports page. Go ahead and give them a like while you're there. And you can go ahead and send in a question and do us a big favor. Uh, if, if you're not a member of UGASports.com but you still watch this show. Which, why are you not? Yeah. At least do us the courtesy of sharing it. You know, if you're not paying your 27 cents a day, at least share the show. That I mean, that's it's not too much to ask, I don't think. So, uh, it's real hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just push the button, <laughs> push, push share, and hit OK, and you're done. Uh, we'll talk about our sponsors later in the show, but uh, just to name them quickly at the beginning, we have Athens Ford, great place to get a car. Aaron Overhead Doors, great place to fix the place where you keep your car. Uh, your pie, I'll tell you about the pizza I had Friday that was fantastic. Academia Brewing Company, uh, we're actually getting a couple of beers brought to the table from Academia because <laughs> it's the best part of our day. Of course, Cable East, Robert Wall out and stay them, and uh, 365 Game Day. So if you need your gear, you can now go buy your SCC East champion, back-to-back champion T-shirts over at 365 Game Day. They have a nice selection. Uh, speaking of, Coach Georgia goes into Lexington, Kentucky, takes care of business. You called it in the first four minutes of last week's show that you were not worried about this game. You thought you pretty much guaranteed Georgia would win. (laughs) Georgia led. I mean, it it was – to me, the game was never really in question. I mean, you had that punt return by Miko Harbin, and they punched it in. The crowd got quiet. And, I mean, at one point, Georgia's up 28-3. to Yeah, first of all, I want to congratulate Coach Smart, the staff, and the players just for nice. significant uh, achievement to win the SEC East twice in a row in Wait, only three years. I thought they were a blind squirrel only did that. Yeah, well, it depends on whether, you, you know, where you get those. They got some glasses, I think. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, I, I do feel like, in all seriousness, uh, taking care of business is one thing, but doing it with the, the way we've dominated the East. If you just look at the uh, – eastern opponents over the last two years the closest game we've had has been 14 points against an eastern team so pretty significant to do that and uh, in celebration of that we got some tamales today from joshua yes which automatically go all the way down to the left (laughs) yes yes. bring these down here this is it's tamale season folks uh you deserve you deserve them i told them victory tamales i told them if we got the east we could get the tamales but (laughs) so but getting back to that um you know, I thought our preparation last week was just outstanding, and, and the reason I bring that out to our people on our side here and the people that are watching is, you know, your preparation is always important, but I felt like our team got significant confidence last week stopping a uh, the running game by what we practice against. Are we losing volume here or something? No, 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 we're good. All right, just don't mess me up during the middle of my talk. <laughs> I'm trying to really bear down. we got technical difficulties here. You know, there's nothing worse than to have some thought and then be an old guy and not remember it. But I'm, my point is that, that, you know, the way we practice, which I know a lot of teams do it, but the challenge for us last week, no question, was stopping the run. You know, going into the game, you know, with a guy like Benny Snell and offensively generating enough power against the team that led the nation in uh, scoring defense. Yes. So th- that kind of worked together because we were able to challenge our offensive line and, and give the, our defense a lot of reps going against a good running game, blocking, and helped our offense going against a defense that's, you know, pretty physical like ours. 
But, you know, in my mind, that game should have been 60 to 7. I mean, it wasn't right. even close. We missed two tremendous chances there with the high snap and the, and then the fumble. I mean, that's 14 or 6 points any way you look at it, minimum. And then, uh, you know, a couple, one overthrow on the ball to uh, Hallman on a great call on, uh, when we were running the clock out. But – you can't ever get mad and about And the goal line stance. Yeah. I mean, he left four points on the field then, too. Yeah, well, that's true. But any way you look at it, and I'll analyze that one, that's not near as bad as what happened last week in my mind. But I think the big thing for us, though, is just the confidence level for these young players to know, uh, first of all, that they can go in and contribute, but also the older guys knowing that these younger guys have developed. So if somebody goes down – i.e. Walker gets hurt, here comes Cox and Anderson. If uh, Then Hill goes in for, you know, ostensibly one of the best players in the country at center. And just the way that everybody has, has played together and next man up, and that was really impressive. And I think the only way I'm going to toot my horn today about saying anything, I told you last spring, Watch out for number 55. You did. You said it before anybody you, else. I told you that, and that's about the only thing I've ever said that was worth anything. <laughs> but look at that guy. I mean, he's got a nasty streak in him on top of everything. And, and you know, you know, Casey, who cares? You got a bad snap, so that's going to happen. I mean, but that guy, I'm, I'm just telling you. And now all of a sudden, hopefully Ben Cleveland's coming back. Cade's going to be all right. And our offensive line's got some massive depth depth on it and how about 71 come on now i mean if you're going to play a game you might as well play a perfect game and he was dominant yes you look at those knockdowns you look at his routine and we when we run to the left it's say good night gracie <laughs> i mean we can make some things happen on it so with all that in mind give him a lot of love give him everything we can and you know we know we got a big one coming up this week we're going against the athletic team that kind of scares you a little bit because of their potential but at the same time hey that's why you come to georgia playing the big games and this is a big game just like the tech game will be in two weeks i I gotta ask you coach you mentioned trey hill you mentioned some of these young guys getting involved how impressive has this 2017 or 2018 signing class been in your opinion i mean uh, the, the contributions they've made right out of the gate well, you just look at from top to bottom. And, of course, we're m- maybe holding a couple of these guys out, but everybody's been called on. Can you imagine where we'd be without Tyson Campbell? Uh, without uh, you know, without Well, just go down through all these yeah. guys. But but all of a sudden now Tyndall comes in there. That was a massive play a he made sack. on the goal line to run right through Benny Snell like that. And it was a good job by our coaches using situational players right now around their defense where he you know guy might not know everything but you put him in there and he, he's quick off the ball and he, he's powerful and you know just say hey, sick him go get it and he did it and then uh just that class is just typical of uh, why guys rank five stars you know i mean all these guys are, are showing how they can play and and campbell's had some times where he's gotten beaten that's for sure but um uh, same time, he, he made some good plays, too. So, uh, I, I just feel – and one person we've talked about bagged a little bit. The first punt in the game, Kamarja hits a 56-yarder that they can't return, and that flipped the field around, too. So, I was happy to see that. Uh, that was outstanding. Well, he only had one punt, uh, like I said, 56-yarder, 50, fantastic. And the fact that George only punted once is quite impressive. I give all that credit to the offensive line. I thought the backs had their best game of the season. Not only did uh, DeAndre Swift look better than he has to, to date. Uh, fully back. Fully back. Like I said. Elijah Holyfield just running people over, you know, that. And, you know, Kirby was asked after the game, you know, how do they compliment each other? He says, well, I don't see a big difference. I do. Oh, I absolutely. see a huge difference. I mean, one guy is going to – if you in the fourth quarter are not pulling back a little bit from hitting Elijah Holyfield as a defender – then you're in- inhuman because <laughs> you have not learned your lesson yet. That, <laughs> Learn some self-preservation. Yes. And then if you can't catch uh, DeAndre Swift, because on that touchdown, the, the the 20-yarder, he made two cuts and left both guys looking looking stupid. Yeah, uh, there were some guys over in the 10 after that play with broken ankles. Uh, I mean, he just set them up and made the move. Yeah. And, so, but I think it's just it's, it's significant to – one of the reasons hopefully people listen to the show is – talk about Coach Hankton and our wide receivers, and Kirby talks about blocking and all, but, but I thought that just the uh, little little move that we made, 
a blocking on the perimeter and really a perimeter block if, if i'm the wide receiver i have an mdm type deal the most dangerous man so it could be the safety or it could be the corner depending on the support pattern if the guy's coming up in an angle as a safety there's no reason for you to push off on a corner and let that guy come up and make the tackle and that's why some people come off the edge and make tackles but two different times on big runs, Holloman came in, saw that the corner was backing up and, and clipped in there and just brushed the safety, which made it great. And that's something you learn as a receiver, MDM, block the most dangerous man. And, and a lot of times people will try to mess you up and, and move the corner back and then let him fire in. But, you know, our guys work really hard on technique, blocking angles, everything at the, at the line of scrimmage, but also our – our wide receivers and the other thing uh, coach cheney and coach stone jesse stones works with the tight end they've really worked hard with our tight ends on technique and you know everybody said hey throw the ball to them and all but both these guys had big games blocking we were in a lot of what we call bison or 12 personnel two tight ends which is really tough on a defense because which is a strong side and you saw those big runs we made That's where both point. those guys locked in and, and made the blocks and so I, that's all a good plan. And then defensively, we hadn't even got to that, but our tackling in the open field was tremendous. Uh, we, we put enough heat on the quarterback with some sacks in critical situations and just had a really good game plan there with, uh, you know, loading up the box and making that Wilson guy beat us throwing. I, I don't want to sound redundant, but I do want to give a shout-out to the offensive line because you have two guys go down. You know, you lose Lamont Galliard first drive. You bring in um, Trey Hill, giant thighs. Thunder thighs. Thunder thighs. <laughs> and he played a very strong game. There were, you know, Trent Smallwood pointed out the number of yards that were got on either side of that A gap. Like you said, Coach, he's just nasty. Uh, Jake was telling me about Trey Hill in high school saying, you got to see this kid, you got to see this kid. And can you imagine remember he was at Auburn now? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and – then Kirby, I want to point out that after the uh, press conference, I mean during during the press conference after the game, move Kirby, your mic up a little uh, bit. Sorry, <laughs> Kirby Smart actually I'm said a stage manager too. <laughs> Kirby Smart actually said that uh, uh, we thought about Trey Hill as a starter in the in the uh, spring and fall. You know, we actually bandied that around. That's how well he was performing in, in practice. That he got out there. So when he went out there. And I actually, it looked like he was over, because they were pointing out, you know, making the designations, calls at the line of scrimmage. And I saw Andrew Thomas pointing this way and him pointing that way. When Hill got out there, he had no hesitation making the calls. Now, I don't know if they're right or not. That's not, you know, I'm, I couldn't tell. But it did not look like a freshman out there. And then Cade Mays goes down and, oh, I don't know, you bring in Kendall Baker. That's shout out to Georgia's offensive line for losing two starters. Kendall, with with a third already out, you know, in um, kept Big Ben Cleveland. Kept the attitude. Kendall though, came kept out playing. there knocking, knocking people down. And I was very impressed with Georgia's offensive line, defensive line. You know, I was mentioning the backs. and But I think that that game was won from the initial snap. When your offensive, your defensive line said, look, you're not going to run on us now. And Snell didn't have that good a game. I mean, heck, they only rushed for 86 yeah. yards. Uh, they, they Some of that they had lost yardage plays. Yeah. Though. I, I, I hate that stat, don't you? I mean, I think we should do it like the pros. If you get sacked, it comes off your passing yardage. Yeah. That's the chicken manure stat. <laughs> well, just, uh, I mean, not, not our game, but I'm just talking no, about No, I know, I know sure, exactly what you mean. You know, if you snap a ball over a guy's head and you lose 12 yards, I mean, that's 12 yards off your rushing stats. I mean, yeah. Or you well, get I mean, you, you, you can see, the, I'll give you like the, the gross them. and net when you look at the net. But Georgia won on the offensive line, defensive line. Uh, I thought that the defensive line got pressure. They had contain. There were no gaps to run through. Every time Biddy Snow went up the middle, there was just nothing there. Um, and to your point about the open field tackling, if you look at the passes they completed, there were very few yards after contact. And I think that was the difference between the LSU game and the Florida game and the uh, this Kentucky game. So few yards after contact. Good yeah. tackling. I know it sounds boring, but to point out good blocking by boring. the offensive it's line. Right. It's yeah, a it's key. It. It's a key. And the other thing is we're right up in the top in the country and plays 15 yards or more. We've given them very few of those. Yeah. Uh, some of them really have, have come on interference plays. You know, they don't put those in there, but – 
Uh, well, the fact that we don't give up anything easy, and that's what really chaps you about LSU, about four of their long plays were where we just didn't get lined up right. And yeah. So the other thing that I want to give a shout-out to is coaching, though. I thought the in-game adjustments that our offense made, the way they blocked the perimeter, the way we, we just kept the ball away from them, and then defensively uh, with Coach Tucker – using some different personnel schemes on different downs and distance. I thought it was just uh, well orchestrated. And then Coach found, boy, I, I mean, our guys, that that was great by Miko, but we blocked some guys on that return. And that's all coaching, too, where to be and what to do with it. I called that, by the way. <laughs> you are good about that. You're no, no, I didn't call Karnak. While, while we were sitting on the field, I turned to the photographer next to me, and I said, I bet you 10 bucks." Miko Hardman returns us for a touchdown, and the what would have been because he's running towards me, the left corner of the end zone. Did you get your ten? No, he didn't. Did he didn't score. <laughs> I but should have paid also, him. You but also the, bragged the, about Miko no. in that report. Whatever you got, well, five, four, three, or something. Yeah, three, two, one. We did. We did predict that. Uh, we mentioned the the kicking game. Miko would uh, tear one off. Uh, but the reason was where I was sitting. They they moved me right before the kick because the TV cameras like, oh, you're in the way. So I had I was sitting behind the big goalpost. You know they had the big cushion around yeah. it, so guys don't run into it. And when I turned my camera around, I couldn't see that corner, and I knew what would happen. He return it into the corner where I couldn't see. So I bet the guy next to me, and he almost did. <laughs> it's just and why do you do the gallery and everything and have so many pictures of women in there and stuff? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, just coach. Game? <laughs> No, just, I've tried to give you the sights and okay. sounds of the university. Yeah. And All if right. you've been to Kentucky, yeah, you had some uh, pretty women in there. Uh, no, I, I, I got to give we, – we've talked a lot about, I, I think, today the, the, the coaching and uh, that aspect of it, the in-game adjustments. I, I, made, I tweeted on Saturday, and I, I, this is no big revelation. I'm not the first person to say it by any stretch of the imagination. I won't be the last. The job Sam Pittman has done on the recruiting trail and getting these guys – to just plug in, you there were there was That's a time, there was a time, and I was thinking about this while watching the game on Saturday. There was a time when even Georgia's front line of guys, you still had questions about the first, the starting five. Yeah. Now, it's just plug and play. It's just go. One guy goes out, and you're and you know used to that was a panic situation for a lot of fans. Oh my God, we, we're down this guy. We're down this guy. Now you don't even really think about it, and that's. A huge, huge change. Imagine losing Isaiah Wynn three years ago. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and there were points. I remember Kirby's first year. He basically that spring he said we have one offensive lineman. Yep. You know, he, and I think he was mentioning talking about Wynn or somebody, and uh, you know, part of that is a kick in the pants to the other guys to step it up a notch. But of he was he was nervous. You know, and uh, to your point, I remember many times going thinking. How many of these guys could play at Alabama? Right. How many of these guys are going to make it to the NFL? And right now, Alabama would love to have some of these guys. Sure. A lot of these guys are going to be in the NFL. And the fact that you could lose three starters. And remember, Aaron, I mean, Andrew Thomas has gone down, and he's been replaced. But to, to think – two games. To, yeah, to think the fact that you have had – so, what, three starters go up? Four starters? I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, Kinley went down. You're right. So you let everybody go down but Isaiah Wilson. And I do want to give Isaiah Wilson credit. Iron Man. Where no one's talking about him. Just like Andrew Thomas last year at right tackle, no one's talking about him. Not only did – Very I, solid. He is very solid. He – to think this is, you know, the first year he's playing, he kept Josh Allen bottled up. And when Josh Allen flips sides and went against Andrew Thomas, Andrew Thomas, uh, for folks who didn't know, was na- nominated – or was named SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week – well deserved, graded out eighty seven percent. That's unheard of. I wonder uh, who the defensive lineman was a week ninety two for Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh Ooh. big shout out to Andrew Thomas for that. But again we the and I think that's the only position Kendall Baker hasn't had to come in and spell. Yeah. Or maybe as when that George was beating somebody out, he might have come in and played it. But I want to give a shout out to Kendall Baker and Isaiah Wilson for the work that they've put in. Such a yeah. testament to the recruiting as well. I mean, the guys yeah. that you're seeing contribute are the guys that you expected would contribute. Sam Pittman, uh, MVP of the they, year. They, yeah. their, their player evaluations on these high school players are stellar, and they're really coming to fruition. Exactly. And the good. thing about it is – Offensive line is the toughest place to play early, in my opinion, just because really? of all the things you see. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's very difficult. Uh, and, and also corner uh, is not as tough because you're out there on an island. But we got a lot of freshmen that are really making significant contributions. And we've got uh, 
you know, w- what happens there is it makes those older guys work that. And some of the older guys that might have, uh, you know, kind of been on cruise control have developed and are playing better. You know, not not saying that any of these guys, but look at the way Mark Webb is playing. He, he you know, he's really gotten a lot better as a position change, doing a good job. Uh, you know, Tariq unsung, McGee's come up big. Uh, unsung hero McGee actually got rated higher than anybody by that pro football focus as yeah. far as plays last week. And then, uh, you, you know, I, th- I think Monty Rice finally is starting to get over that yes. knee injury and making some routine plays that maybe just because of a little injury his knee he wasn't quite as good at. But, hey, we just can't get overboard here about some things that are – that are. Uh, it was so great, but you know, everybody asked me, What's wrong with the goal line? What are you doing on that? Yeah, let's hell? discuss the goal line. But coach. I'm just going to say that we made some issues last week, and we talked about blocking the backside in. And, you know, that's where it helped Florida a whole lot. And Florida was bragging about that so much last week that they forgot to play pass defense <laughs> against, against the, against the uh, Missouri. Missouri Tigers. Hey, I'm going to tell you what a lock is. It's Drew Locke against Florida secondary the last two years. I mean, oh, yes. He's he has completely lit them gashed them. But getting back to that play, we got a deal where, you know, we we do a quarterback sneak, and then we got a fastball quarterback sneak where if you think the defense isn't lined up, you'll just say whatever the call is, and we'll line up and sneak it. And that's what we did on the one that Jake didn't make, and it didn't work, and it looks bad because – they reacted to it and got lined up and stopped us. So it was more of a instinctive call to try to get them unlined, you know, and it didn't work good. And uh, for the rest of the day, though, we, we made short yards. We made a lot of third down passes. And I'm, I'm sure that it's going to be a stickling point and we'll keep working on it. But, you know, we that was a bad-looking play and it didn't go, go like it would, just like the play that uh, Jake and, and – uh, and Swift fumble there right before the half. You know, uh, you never know what what the play was there as far as was it a read, was it a handoff. But those are routine plays that we usually make that we didn't. So that fastball uh, sneak didn't work. So, hey, I'm not concerned about that near as much as I am that D-line that we're getting ready to go against from uh, from this uh, Auburn team. Let me ask Easily you. the best D-line we've played Let against. me ask you this, though. One, uh, uh, one of the, the probably the, the crystal clear moments of the season that I think that everybody will point back to was Kirby going off on the headset after that. Not that you no, re- he was just wanting to know, said, hey, Jim, when we go to Champions <laughs> next week, are you going to get tamales or are you going to get chicken? And, and he gave Jim, the wrong answer. Such Jim a liar. Gave the wrong answer. <laughs> Such a liar. <laughs> but uh, did you feel that in your soul, though? I mean, not that you can read lips, but do, do, no, you, do you remember what that felt like? Kirby I'm sure you've like, done that once or twice. Kirby, like, I'm, I think it was more not the play, but the situational personnel we had. Maybe it didn't look – because you saw up in the stands, up in the press box, uh, Coach Cheney's giving that, uh, you know, what's going on type deal. It looked like – our personnel wasn't significant for what we tried to do, and those things happen. But as a, co- as a coach, though, you, you know you want to make sure that you know, everybody knows that hey, we can't put up with that. But realistically, for us to go in there and rush for that many yards and just tattoo them like that, this that was probably about the only really bad that and that fumble at, when 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 Fromm and uh, Swift fumbled. I, I mean, I really can't find a whole lot else to get get on about and that's yeah, why you, you, have you left these, 20 points on the field yeah you, yeah you did you did but you still beat the dog oh yeah exactly up. i mean you, you doubled them up and uh you basically gave them that Never last was, touchdown yeah, so yeah so it was a how about that uh, immaculate reception they made that was an unbelievable oh that was a heck of a yeah the I tip ball franco harris type deal, <laughs> <I mean. laughs> well I uh, want to give a quick shout-out to Athens 4 for sponsoring our show and sponsoring the website. If you were reading any of the daily practice reports, you know, and, I mean, those things get you know, tens of thousands of views each week. Uh, that Anthony Dasher and uh, Patrick Garbin go to practice every day and the parts that we're allowed to see. Uh, notably, yesterday, we're not allowed to take pictures yesterday at practice. So That's become a new thing. That has become, first, they got rid of uh, video. Now it's no photos, so that, that's, and uh, no explanation there. But if you get a chance, swing out by Athens Ford. If you are a first Why responder. Why would you want to let Gus Malzahn see a picture of a guy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it's not like they're on television or anything. Uh, you you guys, get, that's the only thing I don't like about this show, <laughs> the way you get on my boy Kirby for closing practice. Well, and doing well, all that. Yeah, well, they're at a private. Hey, it worked with, pretty good last week when he 
clubs yeah. Wednesday practice, didn't it? It didn't. It didn't really help on the goal line, though, did it? Oh, no. mm. wow, wow! <laughs> I, I blame it. I blame that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you're a first responder, you get a thousand dollars bonus cash off of all the other specials they have out there. So uh, again, Athens Ford, very patriotic folks on today uh, election day. So if you get a chance, swing out there. Uh, I took my Ford Explorer up uh, through Asheville. I did not go through Pigeon Forge as a a nod, an homage to uh, Jake Roos. Even though he couldn't make the trip, he was uh, ill. Uh, Last time we took him through there, (laughs) I think I made him a little nervous. But I will say, going through 40 and all the switchbacks and all the mounds and all the speed, I I had the best-looking car and and handled fantastic. I mean, 40 through uh, those mountains, it's insane. It's a beautiful drive. And that uh, even the 2016 Ford Explorer did fantastic. Now, the 2018 Ford Explorer, you can get it for $9,500 off. We're in November. There's a lot of 2019s up at Athens Ford. The only place where you can get a vehicle with a lifetime powertrain warranty. You can even get a used vehicle with a lifetime powertrain warranty as long as it's under 80,000 miles. So I'm telling you, if you want to go out and get what I have, a Ford Explorer XLT 202A, uh, you can get it for $9,500 off. If That's you only want, good through the end of the month as well. Yeah. So make sure Offer you get Offer expires at, at the end of November. Uh, if you want to get a 2018 Ford F-150, I saw a bunch of those with the, all the Georgia flags uh, on the way up there. I even passed a few. Although those things will fly. I, I'll tell you this, but I, I was moving. Uh, I'm glad I didn't get a ticket. Uh, $14,500 off the uh, Ford F-150 uh, XLT. Uh, if you want something smaller, uh, you can get the uh, Ford Escape for eighteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. That's seven thousand seven hundred forty dollars off. So again, the Ford Escape, uh, I guess you call it their midsize SUV, fantastic vehicle. Uh, my wife and I were kind of torn between the Explorer and the uh, Escape, but you get a brand new twenty eighteen Ford Escape for nineteen thousand dollars, basically. So if you're not going to Athens Ford to get your new or pre-owned vehicle. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, I'm just saying you're a uh, they should, uh, you're, 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 you're a tech fan. I'm just they saying. Should, they should change the slogan. Yeah, to, well, I mean, if you're not coming you, here to yeah, hear an you, idiot. Yeah, you are because the, we've had people go out there. They talk about what the sales experience is like. They rave about it. And I have people that go out there. They're like, I, I, don't, I hate car dealerships. I hate salesmen and stuff like that. When you go out there, it's the zero pressure. Those folks are out there to help you. Yes, they get paid on commission, I'm sure, somehow. But uh, you would never know it. And if you... I had those guys. They worked for me to get me to find me the best vehicle they could. So big shout out to them. Uh, going back to what you were just talking about, Coach, with the Auburn defensive line coming in. I don't understand what's going on with Auburn because that team is loaded. They have a lot of very talented players. Jake and I have been covering the recruiting. They have picked up more than their fair share, if you will, of talent. But they're three and three in the SEC. Here's the thing with so this what's team. going on? You know, you go back to uh, the season opener, a big win over Washington over there in that, that Chick-fil-A kickoff game, and I thought things were really rolling Same for here. But, but you look at some of the guys they lost. You know, Kieran Johnson having a big year in the pros, just like, uh, you know, our backs would be doing if, if uh, Sony was well. And um, – I think that's a, the number one issue on their offense. They don't have any kind of running game that can hang their hat on. They, gotcha. Gus has always been good when they have a power running game and a good running quarterback. Stin, you know, Stidham can run okay, but he, he's a passer first. And really their their running game is based off screens. They throw all these flare screens, bubble screens, everything you can do, and then they throw the ball deep. They got a lot of speed on the perimeter, and they really attack – offensive line they lost some good offensive linemen to graduation and they've had a couple injuries too and they haven't plugged in their line like we have defensively they got the defensive front but hadn't had the really good rusher off the edge you know the dominator for for loss of yardage and their secondary has had some some problems stopping the pass i mean and the reason is everybody throws on them because it's hard to run on them so yeah. Uh, kicking game, he lost Carlson, you know, got his brother in there kicking, and they've, they've been okay there. But I just think that was a significant win for him last week because now instead of looking down the barrel, hey, we got to play Georgia and Alabama, we've already lost four games, you know, are we going to be six and six? You know, seven and five looks a lot better. Eight and four, if they could knock one of us off, would be really good. So I just – you know, you never know about this Auburn game. I go back to when I was coaching. 
hey, we had it all rolling after beating Florida, and then all we had to do was beat Auburn. We were all set, and we came in here and laid an egg. Couldn't stop them at all. You know, Craig had an unbelievable game. We scored some points, but it's just a, a – Series where you just can't, you know, all these kids know each other. It's it, 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 it's one of these games, and I talk about all the time to, on this show. It's this year. Forget about all the past, but it's hard for me to forget about all the different games at Auburn where the best team didn't win. Yeah, and that's what you got to be careful about in a game like this. And that's why I'm glad we got a coach that really they coach the same way every week after a win or a loss. I mean, they drive this team and they make them better and. We just got to understand that we can't give up a lot of big plays to this team because that's how they're going to score. They're not going to drive the ball on you. They don't. They don't show you that ability. They hit long plays, or they punt. That's just about the way it goes for them. And then defensively, you know, we're not going to run up and down the field on them. But I think we can. Our receivers can have a field day against these guys and and Nauta and those guys underneath too. I, I think you make a good point though too, Roddy, about talking about, you know, I. This team, talent-wise, is, I think, far better than the record shows. I, yeah. I think that they this, – this is a team that can compete with anybody in the nation uh, from a talent perspective. They've done an incredible job on the recruiting yeah. trail. Uh, their front their front seven is uh, about as good as you're going to find anywhere. Uh, so, it, you know, if they come out and, and punch you in the mouth kind of early in this game, that shouldn't come as a surprise. I'd take this all those a, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, you do uh, that Georgia, Georgia would have taken several of them as well. <laughs> they Brown. offered them. Marlon Davidson, Big Cat Bryant. Um, I mean, you've got uh, Daquan Newkirk was a the guy they were after. Zacoby McClain, they didn't really recruit as much. But uh, Montavious Atkinson was a late offer for Georgia. Uh, uh, Chandler Wooten was a guy that they, they poked around at a little bit. Jamie and Sherwood they offered. Uh, Christian Tut. I mean, it, it's just on and on and on. These these are not – this is not a talent bereft team. So, this is still a dangerous game. Yeah, they're always going to have players, right? They're always yep. going to have players. And they are fa- they're wide receivers. That's got to be the fastest wide yeah. receiver core oh, in the nation. A lot of speed it's there. So that one guy challenged, though, Tyreek Hill to a race, didn't he? And, he, he? and it's Anthony Schwartz, and he could – When are they, they going to run? He could do it, man. And speaking of speed, well, this is why you listen to guy. this show. Hey, next week you're going to have the fastest receiver in the country coming in here from UMass, this guy who's caught a lot of passes already, and he, he's – supposedly going to run the fastest time at the combine now it's not like they're going to really threaten us that much but it's going to be nice to see what that guy does i mean you wouldn't have known that thing I, I did not know that but i, I do know that <laughs> i know the umass uh, i do know and i'm not guy. going to tell you who the guy is but one of Auburn's players was in severe academic situation last week and was getting ready to maybe not be eligible for that game against texas a&m and Coach Malzahn went to see the the, um, the professor and said, can't you just do something to get him eligible? And he said, okay. He said, this is a religion class. I'm just going to ask him one question. And he said, okay. He said to the kid, you know, do you know who brought down the walls of Jericho? And before he could say anything, Gus said, hey, we'll pay for everything. We'll pay for it all. <laughs> <laughs> So they took care of that for him, and he's playing. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to say which player that was, but I think we might know. Uh, Who's the other kid besides Anthony Schwartz, the speedster out of Florida? Oh, uh, Sean Shivers. Sean Shivers, not the biggest guy you've ever seen. No, he's about. He goes about five seven, but man, he came. He, he blazed he can, it over here. I we were know, out there he was that killed day. it when he came yeah. to Georgia. He was fun to watch. So, and I remember actually, I did an interview with him early, early in his uh, recruitment. I mean, maybe ninth or tenth grade, not probably ninth grade. Yeah, and he was all about Georgia. Yeah, he was. He looks uh, a lot like Crumpton on the hoof, right? Yeah, he yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Andy oh. Isabella from uh, from Dave McMahon, that's, that's your UMass receiver. Way 77 receptions on the year, 1,394 yards, 11 what? touchdowns. Holy and crap. he's had four <laughs> touchdowns called back. Wow. Why, because it's too fast? <laughs> no, because UMass didn't pay for, for the stadium when they were going to rent it. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, they got a good coach. Old, uh, that, that Whipple guy's a good coach, and I, I had them for a game couple years about three years ago when they were playing the conference usa team and uh, he does a really good job they almost beat tennessee last year i want to see schwartz lined up on tyson campbell because remember tyson campbell schwartz and shivers all ran in the same yeah. final of the uh, florida state track championship in the 100 and i think it was uh it was schwartz, schwartz shivers then campbell but all three of them had ten, uh, sub 10 sub, four. yeah sub 10 four times which is 
all of them would have won state titles in Georgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, Florida speed is nothing to joke about, folks. It's, it's moving. But to think those guys Speaking were – Speaking of that, how are you doing with Stevenson? Mm, good question. Stevenson. Good question. We got a lot of recruiting questions today, actually. Well, let's hit up some questions. And, uh, well, actually, before you do that, I want to give a quick shout-out to uh, your pie. I went out there Friday and had their uh, new voodoo pie. <laughs> Let me explain this thing to you. It's a uh, – it's you know when you walk into any your pie, they – tell you what ask you what kind of dough you want you want white wheat gluten-free and I asked for the white then they uh covered a little extra virgin olive oil uh then they put some mozzarella and feta cheese on it nice little touch with the feta you know being a Mediterranean guy I like the feta uh then they added <laughs> green bell peppers red onions roasted corn and andouille sausage see that roasted corn is an interesting addition it's, on a it's pizza it's fabulous mm-hmm. it, it's a great touch because they used to do that on the Thai pie that they made and so you get the roasted corn on there. And they'll, they'll, how again, can if you, you turn? If you don't want you any of this stuff, that, how can you turn that down? <laughs> well, I'm not even done yet. So after did you have two I, or three? Hush, coach. <laughs> maybe, maybe two. After they've uh, cooked it, they bring it back out. Then they top it with uh, some little cilantro, and they have a spicy ranch drizzle they put across it, and Zaps Voodoo chips. Uh, Zaps, the uh, potato chip company out of New Orleans, best potato chips you can get. And they sprinkle them on top after it's cooked. So it's not like they put it in there and they get all soggy or anything like that. And this thing is just a mountain of heaven. It's just <laughs> it's awesome. So if you get a chance, swing and by. you had to drive on top of that after you ate that? Well, yeah. I mean. I will, I will say go on, on Saturday I was not feeling well. Obviously, I missed the game. Uh, but I did get out of the house once. Uh, uh, to, where did you go? Well, I, I went. Champions, of I course. Came, I came. I, I got out of the house once. I went yeah. to two places. <laughs> oh, okay. I went to your pie and Champy's there you go. Uh, on Saturday. I got some chicken tenders and got a couple of pies and some cheese sticks. And uh, I'm just saying that made me feel all the better. Yeah. So hey, it, it, you, that these voodoo pie. Guys are, these guys are what are else? Walking, talking. <laughs> they, they, what they do is right. They know where to go for the groceries. <laughs> we do. Uh, speaking of, when I was, uh, first place I went when I got to Lexington was Bourbon and Toulouse. Uh, to get a chance, and you're in Lexington, Kentucky. It is a, well, let's describe it. It's kind of a dive. It's a small it little place, you know. But I had the best gumbo I've ever eaten in my Some life. Some of the best Creole food I've ever had, and, and we just got back from New Orleans. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I had better gumbo in Lexington, Kentucky than I did in New Orleans. And if Georgia winds up in the uh, Sugar Bowl, <laughs> I, I doubt you'll – I doubt if we go back we can get better better gumbo than that. So, no, they didn't pay for an ad. I'm just saying a uh, quick shout-out to the folks at Bourbon Toulouse took care of me. A lot of Georgia fans made that trip. They were, they were there yeah, I was impressed in uh, droves. And I felt bad. You know, the Kentucky wanted everybody to hold up these little signs, these little <laughs> placards that would spell out Kentucky. But there were so many Georgia fans in the K section. It looked, it looked like Inucky. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I kind of felt bad. I'm like, hey, maybe y'all need to rethink this thing because, uh, yeah, the Georgia fans aren't going to help you here. Um, all right. Uh, let's hop into a few of these questions. Uh, we do have some recruiting stuff, but I want to get to this one because Ronnie Brown asked a really good question uh, for Coach here. He says, uh, it was nice to hear Coach Stoops give credit to Coach Cheney and how difficult it is to defend that offense at Pittman's blocking scheme. What part of Georgia's run game slash scheme uh, makes it so difficult to defend? I think just the fact that you got so many different groupings. Uh, we've talked about that on the uh, on the show several times about, you know, everybody's got the, the base formation where you have two wide receivers, a tight end, and two backs. And then you can go to different ways to do things. You know, put Nauta in there along with uh, Werner and take a back out or take a receiver out and uh, – and, and put another back in and get two backs. Whatever it might be, you've got to play the formations, but you also got to play the different things that we do. The, you know, we, we used uh, Stanley on one play the other day, and what, what a great run that was. I that mean, was. a great use of his speed, one of the fastest guys in the program, and who would have thought you'd use a guy like that on that situation? I mean, he's never run it this year, have they? He is not, but we pointed out in the fall that when Georgia was practicing, I guess with speed sweep, you yep. know, that he uh, he was always the first guy to take that snap. Then it was followed by Keel Crumpton, and then Miko Hardman. So and Robertson too. He yeah, Rob Robertson has run. He actually ran that in the first game. So uh, I, and I admit, I was, when we're talking about the fast guys, I, I was about to jump in there and give a shout out to Jason Stanley, a senior who has blocked his pants off. You Good know, special who is, teams guy. Special teams guy who is he is the epitome of a. A uh, team player, a guy who hasn't got a lot of balls thrown his way but has never not come off the field covered in dirt, blood, sweat, 
I mean, he, he fights for Georgia. And I was very glad that when you had to pick the guy to give that speed sweep to, you gave it to him. Because think about it. from Everyone, when he gets on the field, Think they're thinking he's a block. blocker. Right. You know, and so that was a deceptive play. But getting deceptive. back to the answer is just the fact that multitude of formation, multitude of, uh, of different types of action to throw the ball, and uh, just puts a pressure on you all the time, you know, uh, on all the areas of the field, you know, throwing it deep, throwing it short, screens, all those things. And um, just got a lot of different things in the library that you can call on to use. So, I think it was just a respectful thing from a stoop standpoint. And really, when you look at, uh, except for the game two years up ago, up there where we kicked the field goal in the last play of the game, uh, we've kind of handled Stoop since he's been in Kentucky. And he's a defensive guy, that's for sure. And, he, he you know, he t- has a lot of respect for what the offense m- makes you do. Uh, Clint Walker here with an uh, interesting question after last week's performances. He says, uh, how close do you think – Otis Reese, Channing Tindall, and Adam Anderson are to playing big minutes. Well, I'd have to say that, uh, I mean, we we're, we saw a lot more Otis Reese this time. Mm-hmm. We saw Channing Tindall come in, as Coach said, in situational, which also – He did end up getting the start, didn't he? Reese? He was slated. Yeah, here, here's he was, what, here's he was slated the thing. Too, but I don't, when I looked out there, I didn't see him. Okay. Well, it depends on who the personnel is. That's We've what, talked yeah. about on this show, and uh, you go ahead and answer this, but I'm going to set you up about the star position you know who's going to play the star well it has a lot to do with what their formations are but that's a place where you can maybe take a linebacker out which would be a a a defensive end whether it's walter grant or somebody like that and you put in a safety and if it's a passing team it might be tyreek mcgee but as a running team we put in last week because of the way they could run the ball a physical type guy like Reese in that position there on the line of scrimmage or two or three yards off on the slot receiver type or on a tight end type deal. And he he really is an athletic, physical guy. You know, he looks like Ed, uh, you know, the guy that played for Al- for uh, Miami and played for the Ravens. Uh, just unbelievable. Safety. Ed Reed. Ed Reed. Yeah. So – that was a good move, and, and then go ahead and t- talk about no, I was about thinking uh, Otis Reese got in there, and then we saw when DeAndre Walker went down, Brenton Cox. Now, granted, Brenton's played a lot, so he, maybe he's not part of the question there, but that's a guy who has played himself into by making the right – because I saw two different plays where he made the right assignment, right call for what he was supposed to do. He had containment. It was a little tricky. They tried to mess. They tried to go at him a couple times to trick him, knowing that he's a freshman and Walker was out of the game. He didn't fall for either one of those. Now, I mean, it may have been others that he messed up on. I don't know. I didn't see the whole thing. But twice I saw that he had big plays. And then just like I thought that Georgia did a good job situationally bringing in uh, Justin Fields, saying, okay, we need him on this offensive play. I thought they did the exact same thing with Adam Anderson and Channing Tindall. Said, look, uh, come in. You're not going to have a confusing play. It's it's third and long. Just tie your ears back and go. And then uh, who was the other one he asked about? Adam Anderson. Adam Anderson. Yeah, I mentioned him as well. Uh, Adam, I think, is playing himself into time. He's just not the biggest guy yet. He doesn't have the weight on him. But Kirby Smart has said, we've seen him in practice, Adam, you're the fastest guy out of that group. Now, imagine that is a an impressive group. Long arms. Too. He can, he comes off the ball like a rocket, it's like and, Ted Hendrickson. And the yeah. th- the thing about that kid is, uh, 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 Ab Harding says Adam Anderson has some serious get off on the ball. He's got that great first step. That's yeah, that's a, a, elite. But the thing that he does about as well as anybody that I've watched in the high school game, and I think this is really what propelled him up to that five-star status, that kid has such bend on the edge. Yes. When he comes around, he can he can contort his body in ways that most guys his size just can't even think about doing. And it's it's unbelievable to watch. But the question is, when, the, when it's not an obvious – when he's not coming in, obviously, to pat, rush the passer, can he recognize the fact that he needs to drop off stay to the outside, contain, maybe drop back into coverage. And that's the thing is, as Coach pointed out last week, and I didn't really notice it until some of our guys did the film breakdown, wa- watching George's uh, – not I mean, even the linemen too, it is a confusing defense. I'm trying to watch what guys' assignments are and where they're supposed to go. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I think that if Georgia wanted to and they simplify the defense, those guys get a lot more playing time. But 
that's not it's not going to happen. So well, as they're, they're learning doing, it, they're getting better. What they're doing though, instead of trying to make all the calls with w- one group, they're making all the calls and situationally subbing and where. That makes a good idea. Hey, you got two or three assignments this week. This is what you're going to do. Get good at it and go go in there and do it. But I wanted to ask you a question here uh, because you're the recruiting guy, and uh, something that's come up here about you know different personnel. When uh, they had the Elite 11 out there at uh, wherever they had it when Justin Fields was there mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, and he was there at the same time with uh, Lawrence from uh, – He was. Who was rated the best passer in the country at that? Uh, at, at that time, it was, uh, it was Lawrence. After, now, after the deal, the, the, that's when – I'm talking the, about when they did it at, at, the, at the deal. Oh, oh the, at there? Yeah. Yeah, that was Justin Fields. So – you don't win that unless you can throw the ball. Right? Uh, not at all. And that's, you got eleven guys out there, yeah. the best passers of high school, and so anybody that's worried about this guy throwing the ball, and tell Rick Neuhausel that he has thrown some passes. <laughs> uh, they said he hadn't thrown a pass. Hey, I'm telling you, and I'll go on record here. What's the date? November six. This guy is a fantastic passer. I'm not talking about good he's a fantastic We've passer and he will come on and, and be one in his future here just like uh, jake is a terrific passer and very accurate does what he needs to do we just haven't gotten to the situation if he wasn't as good as he is can you imagine why we would be playing him even at all with a quarterback like jake from oh absolutely so let's just chill on this that he these people say he can't read the coverage. He can't, you know, that's why. When when he did have a pass call the other day, they got on him quick. It wasn't that he tucked and run, ran the ball. So he is going to light somebody's butt up throwing the ball, and it won't be – it'll be all right with me if it's this week. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, think about it. If you're on defense, you're a defensive coordinator, you see him get in there, you know that – uh, in a lot of those situations, he's coming in to convert a third and two, or you know, if if he's running it, that gives you one additional blocker. You know, it makes sense to do it. But I'm still, when I see him get in there, and I think it's a passing downer, I'm going to blitz the hell out of him. He's a sure. freshman. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna make him hear those footsteps early. And he had a guy coming in, I think, off the right side, and he saw it, and he's like, "Well, hell, well, I gotta, we gotta got do a, something." We got a multitude of plays where he runs the outside on bootlegs and things. He did a great comeback route to Godwin in the one game where he faked up and ran the boot. So, hey, uh, just just let's don't make all these. I mean, hey, that's part of being on what you do and talk about, but let's don't make all these rational deals that, uh, you know, hey, he's a runner. And, uh, I mean, I'm glad we got well, no, both of them. Well, no, we, the one good thing we'll never he, say he's just a runner one good thing he, One good thing he has done, and, and you know, when you, when you see some of these other guys around the country that he rates right as high as that making all these – plays and doing all that stuff it's got to be frustrating but he's also got a guy in front of him that's done a terrific job so it's hard to no he's only to, won two sec east titles right. and gone 12 and 0 against the sec east and right. he's two and he, against florida which is yeah he's that jake from most overrated guy you've ever seen in your life <laughs> i mean he's only like you said two and 0 against florida 12 and 0 against the sec east uh you know i i asked Patrick, i just want to see jake <laughs> The only thing I would like to see Jake, when he's throwing the ball over the middle, just step into the throws and lead the guys like he does to the outside. Yeah. You can't underthrow a guy like Holloman. You know, that was a tough deal the other day. We finally called a play action. But you got to step into those. If he'll do that. And, you know, he's got to quad, he hurt his quad a little bit. But, hey, that's pick nitpicking. I'm telling you, boy, he called a good game at the line, did everything possible. And, and uh, you know, who knows what 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 it would have happened if we'd have scored those other two when we had it down there? But when you go play a team that's ranked ninth in the nation, the biggest game in the history of their program, and you beat them like a tom tom, your quarterback's playing good. Yeah, I mentioned in the post game that I had to do by myself because somebody was dead. <laughs> so I did the post game wrap up. I uh, mentioned that he did a great job calling the plays. Brian Murphy says, uh, "Glad you're feeling better, Jake. We missed you on the post game show. Roddy needs you as a crutch. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. I told everybody he my ca- main focus. He there, carries me through the whole thing. The main focus but, is to keep him from eating all the hot dogs <laughs> they throw away after the game. But the old co- <laughs> you got to give like me a, a little credit here. The old coach knowing that you weren't there. Yes, I had I, was, I had to." 
call up to Rodney and say, look, just remember some of these things if you can. <laughs> yes. And hopefully you pointed them out. Well, when I pointed out the fact that Georgia was blocking well in 12 personnel, you know that's not me saying that. <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. No, I'm just teasing. You're, no, you're I did right. want to give you a little yeah. props there. Yeah, he did. We just had Rip Van Winkle walk in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. This guy's got one of the best gray beards I've ever seen. It could did be Santa. It's not Santa. This guy's Rip Van Winkle. He's been asleep for two days and 14 nights. I, uh, quick shout out to Aaron Overhead Doors. If you need your garage door replaced or you're building a house, a lot of people are building now, uh, that's the best place to go. Huge Georgia fans. Nobody more excited about Georgia uh, drubbing Kentucky than the folks out at Aaron Overhead Doors. Uh, they do fantastic work, and they have a special for you, and I want everybody to know about this. If, you know, you're thinking garage doors are not cheap, and if you need uh, – if you're getting a new one or if you just want to replace it. I mean, you look at the front of your house, 30% of it's taken up by this garage door. If you want to put in something that looks good instead of the ugly crap you have now, just call Aaron, or Aaron Overhead Doors. They have 0% interest, 12-month financing right now. So you can actually uh, get uh, qualified to uh, get an entire year of 0% interest on your door so you can finance it. You're like, hey, we're going to spend, you know, 1000 bucks, 2000 whatever on a new garage door which most of them aren't, the, you know, the, the price is very wildly on what you're doing or you need some sort of service, you can call Aaron Overhead Doors, huge Georgia fans. They cover, they basically, any place in North Georgia, they will go and take care of it. When people ask me what's their service area, it's gigantic. And uh, if, if, if for some reason you are out of their service area, they'll, they'll tell you who to talk to. Uh, great service guys. Uh, all their people that do the work, for them are not contractors. They're not some guy they call up in a truck to go out to your house. You don't know them. These are people who work at Air and Overhead Doors. They're full-time employees, not contractors. So you can be confident when someone shows up. They're not. They didn't just. You know, they don't have 47 different shirts in there. They're uh, responsible for to the company. Yeah. Uh, you know, their work is a reflection of the company. Right. You know that and, you can go to the. And I don't. Wanna, I don't want to get too rough. much in their business, but I know for a fact that the guys at Air and Overhead Doors take care of their employees. Those people have been there forever. So it's not like they're getting somebody new each week. And when I first met with him, he said, look, you take care of your employees. They'll take care of you. I haven't done that Sounds yet. Sounds like I need to go work for Aaron yeah, over at Doors. It would be a lot better, <laughs> <laughs> better job prospects. <laughs> but a uh, quick shout-out to those guys, and I want to thank them for being big sponsors of the show and the website. Uh, they uh, they sponsored the Georgia 321 report that we do. Um, we had that last Friday. We'll probably have another one this Friday before the Auburn game, so be sure to check that out at UGASports.com. If you're not a member – 27 cents a day. Can't beat it. Uh, all right. I'm going to rapid fire. Let me no, rapid go fire. I, I want to say this before we get off here. On a sad note, uh, one of the really great Bulldogs, a guy that's been so instrumental oh, yeah. in uh, in the state Supreme Court, uh, Harris Hines was killed in the wreck on Sunday and, uh, I mean, Saturday, and uh, had a chance to talk to his son, Hap, who played for me. And it's just uh, really a, a sad loss for all of us. So uh, the, the guy was a big supporter of mine early on when I was here, even though his son was playing, but he, he helped me uh, meet so many people around. He's always been around there. But the one thing that I talked about to Hap that I think that all the fans would really like to hear is how how he feels about the way Kirby has embraced the older players in the program that – were before him but also the ones that played for me and played for ray and all that that played with kirby and their input now being around the program i think that's really really critical in the fact that these guys half went up there brandon tolbert were up they were, both were up at the kentucky game but you know it's good to know that the guy in charge is somebody that played with you and you know he, he's going to Love Georgia just like you do. So I, I think Happy, even though we're all sad about his dad, I think that's a big plus to know that, that the players are so so much behind Kirby along with the fans. But it's good to have these guys in the community and coaching like Happ's a AD down at noon. And, hey, you, you got to know what kind of contacts he has with other coaches. And they, he's talking Kirby up. So yeah. sad day for all of us Sunday. But uh, let's, let's – I saw a lot of uh, – people go on Facebook and talk about Judge Hines. I mean, just eloquent. Uh, pe- people people were uh, – He walked the walk, man. He did. I mean, the, the if any of us pass and we get one one-hundredth of that outpouring of emotion, you know, for a guy who lived his life the way uh, Judge Hines did, 
then we will consider ourselves successful. Exactly. I, mean, I mean, I did not see – I saw people, they were just ripping their – I mean, their hearts were torn out to hear about that. Yeah, he so. just retired about two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, that's and, just uh, heartbreaking. So, quite a tragedy so here we for Bulldog go. Nation. All right, let's – yeah, we'll lighten things up here a little bit with a little bit of recruiting talk, uh, which is you know, as, as light as it gets in the world of football, I guess. Uh, but, you know, we've been sick now. Is. Don't take too many. I know. Don't okay. get dizzy. Well, we got early signing day coming uh, up. We do, and uh, we're only – Six gosh, weeks? Seven uh, weeks? Yeah, about five, six weeks. Five weeks? Yeah, six very weeks. exciting. Very exciting. Hard to believe it's almost here. Um, is Papo visiting this weekend? <laughs> Clint Walker. Is Hazelwood coming this weekend? <laughs> Clint Walker uh, wants to know, uh, can Georgia grab another big-time D lineman in this class? Um, you know, just looking around, at the, the guys that they've got on targets on. I really don't see that happening. I think that they'll probably check back in on C.J. Clark, the NC State def- uh, defensive tackle Good commit. Call. Um, and Quayshon Fuller is another guy that they might look at. He's a Florida State commit. Obviously, there's some struggles down there. They're pretty interested. They, there's well, been did, some wasn't he talking interest. about something about like Taking jer- the jersey, yeah, yeah. Taking, that, uh, taking that 30 jersey from Tay Crowder. So uh, Quayshon Fuller, I, those are the two guys I'd probably keep an eye on. Um, you know, as of right now, I don't know that I, I would jump up. How about the guys we got committed? Are we okay Pickering, with those? Pickering's possible. I just don't see him getting out of the state of okay. Mississippi. No, the no, guys no, we got fair. committed okay there? Yeah, very much so. Um, no, you know, everyone's scared about Trayvon Walker taking visits to South Carolina. We just got a question about that. Ab Harding says, what to make of Trayvon's sudden visits to South Carolina and Florida? I'm not reading too much he into that. He likes to Look. eat, man. He likes <laughs> to trip. I mean. it, the guy's a top recruit in the nation. He deserves the opportunity. He's uh, taken full advantage of it. Good for him. Look, it, there's no. You don't need to be worried about Trayvon Walker being a, a bulldog. Of all the guys we got, opinion. he's solid. He's very solid, solid as a rock. I mean, <laughs> I, I would put him. I'd put him only second behind Dominic Blaylock. Right, and, and Blaylock is just the unmovable stone uh, in that regard. Um, let's see. Ronnie Brown says, uh, "Who are some of the uh, recruits left on the board that are must have?" Uh, it's a tough, tough situation to to, to Dane on on anybody. I uh, consider them a must-have. I think those two South Florida cor- cornerbacks are probably the biggest focus yeah. right now. Kyir Elam and Tyreek Stevenson, uh, both kind of in that Miami area. Georgia's had some good success there, obviously, with bringing in Tyson Campbell. They love the speed those guys bring. Uh, I think that that's who they're pushing for up to the end here. Doesn't hurt, to that, see. doesn't hurt that Miami's not doing well either. Right. Florida not looking great either. You know, uh, they've had some struggles. So uh, both of those schools uh, a little bit in flux. Uh, I think you need a running back. It, position that's true. need. That's true. Having lost John Emmer. So you should probably go read the update I just put up yesterday Funny on Kenny McIntosh uh, out of Fort Lauderdale. Go check that one out. He I definitely like that. That was good. gives some uh, some great insight into Georgia. Tells you kind of why he likes the Bulldogs. And uh, I was really impressed. You know, I, I always ask South Florida guys when I talk to him, I say, uh, you know, people assume that you're since you're from Florida, you don't leave Florida. That's just how it goes a lot of times. He said, they call me the blueprint. <laughs> I'm the blueprint. I'm different. I like to get out. I like to see it. So uh, I, like I, it. I like their chances with him. Uh, uh, official visit coming up this weekend. That's a big one. He's when very you're talking aware. to those Florida kids next time, without being negative recruiting, ask them this question. <laughs> what was the record the last two weeks for Florida, Florida State, and Miami together? Okay. Oh, and so oh, oh. First time that's ever happened. So, I mean, just to say. Tough times. Tough times. Uh, yeah, I mean, UCF once Who's again. Who's won the SEC East the last two years? UCF once again, the uh, the premier program in uh, in Florida, it appears. Uh, Chad Carson says, uh, chances with uh, that we get Hazelwood back. Um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna say I don't think it's a very good chance. I, I really don't. Uh, the, the further this goes on, the more I'm around it, the more I'm hearing. I just don't well, feel We'll have a story later good. in the week where we spoke to his mother and some quotes from him. Uh, so – Stay tuned for that, but because uh, George, George is not and, quit. If I, I think Oklahoma makes personally for what he says he wants, I think Oklahoma makes the most sense of any option he's got. If yeah. he wants the ball in the air as much as he says he does, and that's his focus, then I think they the, got the two good receivers. They, they, they do, they do. They got yeah, some great but ones. I, I just think I don't say he's burned a bridge, but when you're basically talking about George and saying they need to throw the ball more, if they if Justin Fields were starting, that might change my commitment or change my status. Coaches don't want to be pushed around no, like that. No, you you just. And, again, it's not him dictating to Georgia. He was asked a question. He answered it honestly. I give uh, Jaden all the credit in the world for not hemming and hawing. Sure. I mean, he, he was honest with us. He's, he's always been honest with me. I, at least it feels that way. So I give him credit for saying that. But I'm just thinking that uh, he wants the ball more than Georgia's going to put it in the air. Georgia's going to be a run-first team to set up the pass. And I just don't see. What about Papo? 
Uh, yes, interesting, interesting. That's, Papo's a lot more interesting. Went visited Tennessee last week. Watch that big win they had. Yeah, and it's, um, Tennessee. Tennessee's a real interesting play for him, just because they've been very, uh, they've been involved for a very long time. Very familiar with Jeremy Pruitt, four years, a close friend with, of Wanya Morris, who's already committed there. Uh, so they've had a chance to explore that together. Georgia, it seems, is kind of picking up some steam in that regard as maybe looking at him as a star safety. And, and what's interesting about that is that reminds me of kind of the arc that Jaden Hunter's recruitment took uh, over the course of time. He was a guy who was thought to be a linebacker, inside guy. And then uh, over time, uh, most people ended up thinking of him more as a star guy. Look at the history of Kirby's recruiting, though. And we don't use the word flip around here, but based on last year, there were eight of them that were going somewhere else that came here at the in the month of November and December, right? Exactly. Exactly. So I like that. And a lot of them are playing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just which saying. has to be an I, which, I'm just which, is, which is an easy sell. I mean, yeah. that's a great thing to be able to sell to these guys. You you can prove it right off the bat. Well, when, when those kids come on the recruiting visits over the following weeks and they talk to the guys who were committed elsewhere and they say, "What do you think of your first year at Georgia?" Well, when I was playing against Kentucky, when I was playing against Florida, when I got in versus MTSU, right. as compared to hey, I didn't get to make the trip. I wouldn't. Know. I was. I'm in just red saying shirt. It, it does matter for um, another school. I last one here that I'm going to do. Uh, a lot of people asking about Nolan Smith. Will he stick with the Bulldogs? Look, he's a guy who's, uh, you know, you're in the throes of it right now. Everybody wants to create intrigue and, and give themselves some, some excitement. I, he's going to get around and visit. I mean, everybody wants to. He told us that day one. It, it, it's, it's understood, and, he, and Georgia knows that. Yeah. The who would about, you compare him to? Like, what is he, who does he look like that, we, that all the fans would know? I personally, I, I think that he's a guy – I think he's a guy who's a more developed out of high school version of uh, DeAndre Walker. I think he's a more game-ready version of DeAndre Ooh, Walker. That makes just, my just, mouth just the way <laughs> the way he tested off the charts for a guy his size – I've not seen anything like that. Yeah, I've been doing this a long right. time. You're right. I mean, I remember, you know, Ruben Foster putting up some crazy numbers, you know, just for strength and power. But when you add the speed that he has for a guy his size and the power, I, I cannot recall a guy who put up those numbers. Yeah, you put I mean, those, put him beside. T- Tavon Walker. Ooh. Yeah, I and and people are asking, do you keep him? Look, I think the the. George has been his dream school since he was in ninth grade. I remember talking to him about it. Uh, we have an interview, in fact, if you go look on his page somewhere from when he was in ninth grade and we talked about it. He's been committed for a long time. He's got the deepest relationships with them. He's got uh, deep relationships on the team. And in the end. And he's recruiting for them. Don't and, forget that. And it, yeah, and in the end, relationships went out more yeah. often than not in the recruiting Good world. Good point. Well, I guess, One thing I, I want to give you some love about, because I used to hate you know recruiting guys calling up people and talking all that when i was a coach because well so and so said this but but the one thing that you got that i don't know these other guys these kids know that you're not gonna hang them out to dry and you you really do a good job of 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 building some trust with them because you you go out to you go out and wait a minute he works for us i know but then i'll have to pay you more i don't (laughs) hey you pay peanuts you get you gotta pay so let me just tell you this though i think it's great that you can as hard as it is to talk to these guys and so many people trying to bam on them you know the fact that you can get that kind of in input for them and uh, I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't. I think it's great that, that our fans get to, that, that are on this site get to hear and read about what, what these guys are really thinking because they're not going to BS you on that. And uh, and you don't really just put out clickbait. I think you put out good stuff, man. Well, I really appreciate well, I wanna, that, uh, Coach. Thank you. Speaking of people who, who do a fantastic job, I'm going to give uh, – before we uh, cut out here, I want to give a quick shout-out to Academia Brewing Company. This Saturday, 7 o'clock, if you're not in the stadium where it's going to be, from what I understand, it's going to be pretty cold out there. Uh, football weather, man. Yeah, football weather. But some fans don't want to do it. If you want to sit in the warm with the best beer you can get in Athens, some of the best food that you'll find in Athens, uh, swing by Academia Brewing Company. It's out there close to the uh, Mall of Georgia. and Not Mall of Georgia, the uh, Georgia Square Mall. Uh, fantastic place to watch a game. They have two giant screens up. If you are an alumnus of the University of Georgia, alumni, uh, you can be part of the UGA alumni group out there. You get a reserved seat. They have two big screens. They're watching the games. Special pint glass for Special you. Special pint glasses for you. I mean, yeah, the uh, 
they've got it on lock out there. They have these fantastic three meat sandwiches that you can get. I mean, they have a chef out there. It's not just a place where you go in and uh, hey, you know what? Their beer menu changes all the time, and they have an actual chef who's always trying to do new things. He's creating new stuff all the time out there. He's quite good. He's a huge Georgia fan. The place was founded by Georgia fans. I mean, Georgia alums and graduates. So, uh, if you get a chance, swing out by Academia Brewing Company. You will not have a better uh, bulldog watching experience and going anywhere besides that place. All right. Uh, we, we skipped this last week, but I want to make sure we get it. Mouthwatering player of the week this week against the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, I mean, last week I had DeAndre Swift, and you didn't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sure you did. I, I'll fit. Yeah. My mouthwatering guy this week, I think it's going to be uh, Tyson Campbell. I think they're going to go after him, and he's going to make some big plays in this game. There you go, Roddy. I'm going to go Tyler Clark. Okay, all right. Tyler Clark, he's I, probably due I, up for I, one. I think he's going to get in there. I, I'm going to give him two sacks. I'm going to say that we see a lot more Channing Tindall this week. I think that he earned himself some playing time with that sack last week. That's a guy with too much athleticism to keep off the field for too long. If it's not next week, it'll be soon. I promise you before the end of the season, I bet you. All um, right. All right. So Bold words. Yeah. All right, anyway, that's all the time we have for this week. Big shout-out to Athens Ford, Aaron Overhead Doors, Your Pie, Academia Brewing Company, uh, Cable East. Thanks, Robert Wall, for sponsoring the show. We, we know we don't, <laughs> we don't do anything for you, but you do wonders for us, and we do appreciate it. And, of course, 365 Game Day, 11 Live Sports. Share this podcast, please. And, of course, uh, Champies here on Baxter. Take care. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. That's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens.